Many years ago, I did a hand applique. So that's all the experience I have in applicating. So I'm looking forward to learning something new, especially since with the homestead, I'm just, I'm at that block that I need to applique. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you, so with the home, did you do like the buttonhole stitch, the hand stitch on the outside edge, or what did you do for the hand, or needle turn? Oh, I did needle turn, but that was like oh, 30 years ago. Yeah, back in the day. Okay, yeah. Yes. For my homestead, I just did raw edge. So that's just like cut it out. And then I think I just used a glue stick and just kind of tacked it down where it was and then stitched around the inside like an eighth of an inch. So okay. I think I stitched twice because sometimes with the raw edge, um, when you wash it or whatever, it, it pulls under. You have to do a oh. smaller stitch. But yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm not super fancy with my applique. <laughs> okay. I have a piece on my, um, actually it's on my ironing board that I've, I've copied the designs onto the um, fusible fusible right uh -huh. um, and I've done a little bit it used to intimidate me so that I wouldn't even touch it oh okay um, I'm getting there my mom loves um, I almost think it's Kim Deal, and she does a lot of Kim Deal and a lot of Kim Deal applique. Um, and Deal is like D-I-E-H-L um, or something D. Yeah, I think it's Deal like that. And um, she uses, I believe, like a monofilament on the top and does a teeniest, tiniest zigzag across it. But Kim has a method of doing applique, I believe. And my mom really likes it. Um, and then I know, depending on your sewing machine, you could have a buttonhole so it goes two stitches and then it'll take one stitch in and then go two stitches and one stitch in. So if you do use the fusible, you can still finish your sides of the applique really nice using that buttonhole okay. by machine or by hand as well. Yeah, I don't okay. have a lot of hand anymore. Yeah. I have a lot of arthritis in my thumbs and it's a so are you gonna go back over yours with the like a tiny zigzag or how do you or the buttonhole? Buttonhole probably. Yeah, yeah. And a lot use the contrasting thread too. So they'll use like a black thread so that really, you know, kind of highlights the edges and stuff. Or you can use one that goes away. Like I think Kim Dill is the one that used the monofilament. So it's clear and see-through and it just disappears and you don't really notice it at all. But yeah. Oh, okay. Or there is the satin stitch as well, which is the tight zigzag. So it's really, yeah. yeah. So Pat, why have you tried the button or the zigzag? Um, I've tried the buttonhole stitch. Oh, okay. On my machine. Okay. Um, I had I want to to look through those um, videos because my daughter gave me a block of the month and it's six inch blocks and it's prefused oh. applique. I mean, all I have to do is iron it on, but then I have to figure out and it's a full it's a huge quilt. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, my mom has done one of those. It was a big butterfly and flower. Um, hmm. Okay. But some of these are really thin. Mm. And I like, could you have done something else? It's from, <laughs> could you have got me something easier? Like, this seems like it's just press and go, but in reality, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> something's got to tick it down or it's going to fly away. The other thing, though, Pat, is I know some people just send it off to um, the quilter, and so you fuse it and you piece your blocks. And then you tell the oh. quilter, I've not, I've not stitched any of these down. And so they run on top of it and make sure that, you know, for the most part, it's tagged oh. down. So 
that's an option as well as you force the quilter to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, good morning okay. or good afternoon, Monica. We we're talking applique. Yeah. So, um, yeah, fusible is fun because it's nice, but then I, I don't know. I don't love fuse, using the fusible because it adds that stiffness to it and, it, and mm -hmm. then it's and then it's hard to stitch. So if you yeah. do the buttonhole, it like wears down your needle and it shreds your thread. So you do have to watch that as well. And I know there's some hints and tips on that. Like you use a larger needle when you are doing that. So it makes a larger hole um, so it doesn't shred your thread. But I never thought of that. Yeah, and then you know, cotton is cotton, and it's um, it'll squish that hole away. You know, it'll it'll fill it in. It won't leave a huge hole like um, you know, with like if you were doing with knit fabric, that would actually poke a hole in it, and it would be a hole. But with cotton, it just moves it aside. So, Monica, have you done any kind of, like, what is your preference of applique fusible with a zigzag buttonhole? Do you hand, hand stitch the buttonhole? That's kind of what we're talking about. Typically fusible with a, um, with a zigzag. Um, I don't have a huge experience enough with um, anything else. So, cause I'm pretty much self-taught, but um, hand stuff, I want to do that more trying to get into that more but that's not my forte so yeah away from it for your zigzag do you do like more of a closed stitch so it's like looks like a satin stitch so it's really filled in or do you just do a small if I choose to do that I'm going to do it that way if I'm not doing that then I'll do a blanket stitch if okay. I'm gonna yeah 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 and then do you usually use like coordinating color or the black black thread for the blanket I think it depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And my right. Naomi, um, it didn't, it had a blanket stitch, but the, the one that went in didn't go sideways completely. It went at an angle. So it wasn't a real blanket stitch and that bothered the heck out of me. But my other mm -hmm. brother machine had like the true blanket stitch. This one's just a straight one. So if I did that, I had to get the other machine out, but yeah. And I know some who don't use a blanket stitch, but they'll do like a leaf stitch or something. So it's more decorative along the sides too. It just gets fussy when you hit those points or corners or <laughs> you're just like needle down and then you're like kind of turn the wheel by hand because you're not sure where it's going to go. You got and where these random poke outs um stitches because you're just like well I wasn't expecting the needle to go that way but yeah welcome Pat and Cindy and Vicki we're just talking about applique and then if anybody has any questions applique or sewing related we'll answer whatever have oh. you tried a water soluble fab stabilizer I've not um who was talking about that the other day may have been Vicky, but somebody else as well. Yeah, so, and that one, are you thinking, Judy, that that one is the one you stitch around, pull it right sides out, and then put it down, and then it washes away, and you know, you stitch down the edge? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I've used that on my app, or my embroidery machine, and so I have some of that, so I was thinking, oh, I wonder if I could just use that. Yeah. And then it wouldn't be hard. I know a few have talked about like uh, dryer sheets used, used dryer okay. sheets because they're thin and worn down. Mm -hmm. And then you put your fabric right sides together to the dryer sheet, stitch around that edge and then snip the dryer sheet, like make a little slit. Mm -hmm. You sew all the way around and there's no turning area. So you slit the dryer sheet, pop it right sides out give it a good press and then you can trim the dryer sheet out and then stitch oh. it down. So it has a nice turned edge under, but you're not doing needle turn. It's all machine until you get it down. Yeah. Wow. That's a great idea. That's one as well. Yeah. I want to try the usable. I mean, the, oh, the, the well, slide, water well. slide, I never thought about it. I mean, I know I have some hanging around because I use them to make earrings. Mm -hmm. So 
And I'm like, so I mean, that by definition would say that it works. Cause I mean, <laughs> pretty much it, the earring ends up just being an applique. Just hey, total uh -huh. press with water. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Cause we'll have a tendency to flip it right out. And then you like, yeah, you know, a couple steam shots there. And then all of a sudden you'll just be like, goo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big sign. Don't press with me. <laughs> yeah. Kathy, what did you say? What did you want to say? Um, I um, have some applique that I think I've been working on for 10 years, <laughs> but because it was a class, so it says be smart and it's, so I don't know, can you see the hand, the buttons, the blanket? Yes. You did that so, by hand? What's that? You did that by hand? I did. So it was supposed to be a machine applique class, but I wanted to do, <laughs> do it by hand. And we were, you were talking about, so this one says be grateful. They're all different. Anyway, it's called B Attitudes. That's the book. Uh -huh. um, but it's so stiff. And it's stiffer because you have all these layers that you've layered on top of one another. And so I probably shouldn't have used the hitch because it's hard to get the needle through. Yeah. Where so I have now? like three of them to make. I mean, they're already... They're already like pressed on, but I haven't done the applique part on it. I really like them, but I don't know what I'm going to do with them now. I The person I was going to give them to probably is all grown up now. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing it. I was just hoping that it wouldn't have been, um, I didn't realize it, it was going to be so thick. So I'm just wondering, would it have been better if I was going to hand applique to just leave an edge around the sides and then fold it under and then do, you know what I, so do you like a needle turn and then, yeah, sort of like a needle, needle turn, but it is, um, it is ironed down and then just the edges maybe just turn under. I don't know. There's the, there's the um, like the freezer paper method where the freezer paper is the template and then you fold the fabric back and press it so it keeps right. it and then pop the freezer paper out yeah and you stitch it down yeah my friend angie she really likes that method and she does a lot of hand work but she really oh, okay. likes that one. yeah that's a good idea yeah and then just depending on how you want to stitch it down because once that edge is under really like the blanket stitch is to cover that raw edge mm -hmm. and to keep it in place um but okay. once you, once you have that raw edge turned under you don't necessarily need to do a blanket stitch because it's finished and nice so you could yeah I kind of, invisible but stuff. i kind of like the blanket stitch oh yeah. yeah yeah for this one you continue on what you were doing yeah yeah. Right. And so I just, I don't know. But um, the funniest thing is that I have um, a humongous light box. And I, so we had had a house built at one point and I just asked the framers if I, they had any spare wood that, you know, they could save for me. Cause I had a little, I had a little box I was going to make. And then they took the pattern from me and for my birthday, they made me this light box, but it's huge. And so like I could make, I mean, literally <laughs> it's probably 24 inches by 18. You're like, what am um, I racing here? I know, right? I'm not building a house here, but anyway, it was very sweet and thoughtful of them, but I just wanted a little one to do some small, you know, for applique. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So those, maybe this is something I can work on while my sewing machines are not here. Oh yeah. Did you get any news on that? Um, I took them both in to be serviced in the place I take it. It takes three weeks, no matter what. They only pick up and drop um, off. In three weeks, in that amount of time. Yeah. So, and then I also bought a um, 
one of the ruler, what the feet that's for the rulers, you know, to quilt the little quilting for machine ruler. quilting. Yeah, yeah. So I bought one of those thinking I'd practice on that too. But well, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something to look forward to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Has anybody done edge to edge with a, an embroidery machine? Edge to edge quilting. Oh, Vicki has. She's raising her hand. She's coming to talk now. <laughs> Move the camera so you can see. <clears throat> I have with the embroidery machine. Uh, the key is to be sure you can pinpoint, line it up, because wherever okay. that last stitch comes off, the other one has to be right on it to keep it straight. Okay. And usually they'll give you um, marks, like little ticky, look like a little tick mark, kind of looks okay. like a on each side to show you where it needs to be on the next one so you can line it up right there. They're not too hard. Um, I don't think they make them too intricate for the embroidered hoops because they don't want to make it too difficult for people. Okay. What I forgot is that some patterns, one row goes this way and the other row goes upside down to make them connect. Ah, watch your instructions and see what they do. They and some of them will connect going in a column, and some of them will connect. Usually, they'll connect going across. But on one of mine, they taught us to, that one pattern. They taught us to go down in the column, then come up and do the next column, and we turned it around. Yeah. Okay. I have a whole series of um, DVDs that I bought. Um, I think there's like 11, 11 of them, and so I was, there are different patterns on the, the DVDs. Um, Who, whose are they? Emily Scott? Yes. That you should, you should be, do you have the book? Yes. If you've got the book and the DVD, you should be fine. I did, I had the book. I didn't have a DVD, but I took a class at my girlfriend's quilt shop and they were telling us how, and, so, and it was hers that we used that, she had us do a column and then we did the next columns so that they matched up. Okay. So and just watch where the repeat and match doing up. One here and then one there and then one here. It's all kind of different. Just see which way they tell you to go to make your points match. How big is your project you're, you're going to do it on? Um, a baby quilt. It's small. Oh, so something manageable at least. You have certain block size that you're going to work with. You're just going to do an overall, whatever you're. I think just an overall whatever your biggest hoop size is. Yeah. I know that I've tried sandwiching to do it on the computer because I have some Anita Good designs. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a dickens of a time getting it to sandwich with mm -hmm. the embroider here. Do you oh. have a magnetic hoop? I have one where you put magnets on the sides. It doesn't- That's the best, that's the best way to do these. Okay. Because, because you have, have so many layers going into the hoop, it doesn't like to, you know, it'll pop out. Oh. I've, I've got the magnetic hoops for mine. You okay. would think at this point that they would make a different hoop that would allow adjustment for thickness, you know. I would think. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have to do too much adjustments on your machine to get everything else back in line. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why they do the magnetic hoops. Which is interesting that you use magnetics next to the computer. I know, I've uh, thought the same thing. But I guess it's in, the, it's in the arm area and not, you know, in the computer right. area, so. But that hoop, that hoop goes all the way over on your throat. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, interesting. I'm excited. I have heard. Have but, that. Yeah. What's that, Vicki? I have heard that the new magnetic hoop for the brother that's made by brother is really heavy. Mm. Mm. We shall see if that works or not. Yeah, I have a Janome. Yeah, you can get magnetic hoops. Well, it comes with the four little magnets, but other than that, you don't have. Well, I have one that's just magnetic. Yeah. Mm. It has big magnets like this. Thing. Have you tried quilting using those, uh, the embroidery patterns and hoops, Joni? Small stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Not a quilt. <laughs> I had never really like thought that you 
like, I don't know why you couldn't, and which is why you're talking about it, but I had never thought about using the embroidery machine for quilting. So that's really interesting. Yeah, I'm learning something new. Um, design. A lot of them, you can do everything in the hoop at one time, and then you use the bias strips to get to join the whole quilt together. Oh yeah, so you could do quilt as you go that, that direction as well. Right. Yeah. Mm. Design by Juju Juju has got uh, quilt as you go kind of blocks for embroidery, and I'm gonna try some of those. But with I that. haven't done it yet. Oh yeah, I don't buy any of those because I figure I can draw them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't draw a stick person. So hey, no. that. <laughs> if we can draw them for the long arm, which is only a 16 inch throat, so I only have a six inch pattern. There's no reason why I can't make it fit in a hoop. True, that's true. Good point. Good point. Yeah. And yeah. I don't have a long arm, so. Yeah, Pat's like, I don't know that drawing. Yeah. <laughs> you just take, take it out of the coloring book and add some lines to it, and it all goes together. <laughs> Monica's long arm is how she, yes. <laughs> like this. Ooh. Monica has a long arm or she has a domestic? No, no I'm joking. This is my long arm here. <laughs> gotcha. That's what I miss. Thank you. All the quilting work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Is anybody else trying applique, Pat or, in, or Cindy? Anybody else have any suggestions on the applique chit chat? I've just, here? I've just used my sewing machine and done buttonhole stitches and zigzags. And I usually, depends on whether it's, a smooth looking picture or not it, but if sometimes I do it real tight like a satin stitch and sometimes I do it loose more if, loose like if it's a scarecrow it's going to be loose did you well, learn how to do your points and, and keep and stop and back have to end with a needle on a certain side and all that yeah yeah I, okay. I'm I, I have to readjust because I have my needle so it automatically comes up um because I tend to break <laughs> But um, when I'm doing that, I have it so it stays down so I can pivot. In. Yeah. yeah, that's my only thing is like when I pivot, I'm like, which way was the needle going to go next? And sometimes <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. Keep a cheat sheet behind my machine. Uh, up, down, left, right. Uh, what did it say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And uh, thinking, I mean, like, yeah, and Kathy, you're dealing with this is all the hand the hand buttonhole stitching on the outside of the fusible. And so, you know, that's a lot. That's really thick. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, thick. Laura. Yeah. So, I have a question, I guess. So yeah. since, um, for the people who are using fusibles, like, is there a particular one that they like? I actually found something that I, I did. This one has a satin one, though. Oh, but, nice. like, flower stems and stuff. I yeah. did. Yep. So, yeah, I'm like, yeah, this whole. <laughs> oh, it's got a mix mix of the patchwork with the applique. That's pretty. Love your colors. Yep. You do love some gray, Monica. I um, I love everything. I've got a lot of um, color. I'm a color person. I love so it. I'm definitely not one muted but like if you're talking about for my bedroom is going to be browns more than likely i'm a i am an earth girl i'm an earth tone i love my earth tones fall kind of colors that's my go-to but as far as just fabric even clothes i, I love variety so there's going to be every color in there yeah oh i love that one is that almost looks like a kim deal but maybe not because one time she had like a star in the center and then it ha she always has applique. So yeah, I'm just wondering, but. Uh, so as far as fusible goes, the lightweight is the best. Anything that's thin and lightweight. If you're doing more than one layer, um, yeah, that runs into, because I know like the method that like, like uh, Laura Heine does with the, um, and Shan Shannon Brinkley with the applique mosaic or whatever, where you cut pieces and you layer them. Yeah, when once you start getting a lot of layers, it gets really thick and 
kind of crunchy, like it doesn't fold <laughs> at all because you're folding <laughs> paper almost. Yeah. My, so, my mom um, me to use stitch witchery, and that's what I still use. The stitch witchery. Yeah, it's real thin and lightweight. And, uh, I did with well, the getting it on and yeah steam a seam too I think I've used oh yes yep the steam a seam is a good one because I think that one is the one that comes in the lightweight right mm -hmm. yeah and they have lightweight yeah in my head I'm like who would ever use the heavy like why do we even have that <laughs> but so maybe I, for I use it for my swatches um, I like to when I make like get my fabric, I'll make I'll put it on a little card and make swatches of my fabric. So okay. I use a fabric. Well, a lot of people just... think the heavy is like it's never going to come off. Oh, uh, <laughs> like in the store when they wanted the heavy, they thought, oh, on forever. Well, yeah, no, 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 no. That's not what it be, means. <laughs> yeah, but I thought it was supposed to be the only for things that you weren't planning to sew. You were supposed oh. to use heavy, and anything else was supposed to be the light, but the heavy was supposedly designed so that you, because you're not supposed to sew through that. So no sew method, whatever. No sew. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, who uses that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of applique, and when I do, it's always the raw edge, because I'm like, I just like it to move and not be heavy, and I don't want to fight it with my machine and my needles and stuff like that, so that's what I typically do, but yeah. Cindy, were you going to say something? Oh. No. It did have a big flower in the middle. I haven't pulled this out in a long, this was the very first quilt, I, no, this is the second piecing I ever did. So. Okay, let's look been sitting in there in a, in a while but the middle let me see if I can oh it, that's so cute so sorry for the wrinkles of course because like I said it's been tucked away but yeah so I this is need to get that back out and finish that up that's going to be really yeah, great this was on my orphan project list so which is how how I put my hands on it because now it's available so but yeah this and yeah this is thing was the second one my first one has grays in it too it was gray and purple <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> i love it i was putting together some of the um sections for the homestead later in the year i'm down to august and stuff but um uh, for anyways to be scheduled out anybody working on those blocks i yet. Kathy smiles but says it not yet. Somebody posted that they had finished the first section and it looked really good. So that Yeah, someone did. I saw that. I don't remember who it was. Yeah. Was yeah. it Barbara? I can't remember. But yeah. Yeah, it looked good. I'm cutting mine out today. You're cutting it out? Okay. Okay. I'm still having a problem with my fabric. <laughs> I I have my fabrics. I never showed anybody my fabrics. Just pick it along the way, Monica. That's what I did. Pick that, it along the that's way. That's what I plan on doing. Yeah. But I, I at least still need to have it narrowed down to a happy family, like, that I know that I'll be able to pull from along the way and be okay with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's true. Because even when I do a pick along the way, I tend to run out of one fabric because I always choose it. <laughs> I have to watch that because like by the end of the quilt you've got all this random fabric because you ran out of everything of, and you never like randomized anything so yeah <laughs> Cindy what are you going for then yeah what these are, these are my colors for homestead like a a dusty rose oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dark uh-huh my medium oh. light. You got them? Oh, pretty. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I did my turquoises. Oh, yeah. Pretty. That's my light and medium. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And my turk dark. So, oh, it's going to be so nice. nice. 
And I probably will add in there. Right, right. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use greens for but you've the got green jumping start point. Yes. Ooh, I like it. They're uh, the roses. I always like the uh, dusty mauve. Yeah. You know, when it was big with the colonial blue and the sage. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like that group of colors. That was before Kathy's um, bee pattern from Thimbleberries. <laughs> Oh, well, I was at Big Thimbleberries. I got three books. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think that pattern is Heart in Hand or something like that, Kathy. In Heart in Hand or something. Something, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. reminds yeah. me. Yes. Judy, were you going to say something? Oh, uh, no. yeah. I have all but three of the, let's see. Oh, you've started it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I the black and gray with the red. With the red, yeah. And that's my favorite oh, that's color. That's nice. I so like the that. question is, is on the applique. Yes. It's like, how do I do? I do have just a plain black. For your uh, background? Uh, my background's light gray. Okay. So I was thinking for the stem for the flowers on the applique piece. Oh, yes. And I thought I would just make the red, the tulips, the red, the use the That'll red there. Nice. I'm going to look at the block again really quick. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you hold it up again, Judy? Oh, yeah. I, I missed it. Okay. Maybe there's too much light. Oh, pretty. So the medium gray is my neutral color that I've been decided, uh -huh. but yeah. Very nice. So, Thank you. So I'm going to yeah. share. Okay, here it comes. So that's the block right there that you're working on. Right. The black sits on top of all of those tulips, so you'll see more of it. I almost think you'd probably be happier with the, the dark gray and not the black. Okay. But you might want to addition a few anyways. Okay. Are you going to do all your tulips red? I was thinking about it. Yeah. Because you, yeah. you could do like three, the light gray or something, and then one red, so it's just one. I don't know. You could do a lot with that block. Yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> but the Sometimes red is the dark and the black is the dark, so it's that's true. They would complement each other very nicely. Well, it'll make the whole thing dark though if you take a black and white. That's true. Yeah. I don't <laughs> yeah, they're not I mean there's you're not cutting out a ton, and if you have enough fabric, you could audition a few. Like with the black stem or a dark gray stem, and then you could decide. You could actually do okay. two, one black and one dark gray if you wanted to. I'm throwing out oh, okay. confusion for you, so you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. Lots, of, lots of options. <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll yeah. see what I come up with. Hmm. Yeah, that, that combination is a lot of fun because you get to decide where that red pop goes in. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that makes it, that makes it kind of, that makes a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. You're in okay. control, I guess. Well, and if, you know, if you're not using, well, even if you are using fusible, don't fuse it until you're ready. Right. You know, move them all around, cut a few more, oh, yeah. whatever. And then, yeah. and then decide once it's done, then you fuse or glue or whatever. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Or maybe if you have a couple different ones, you can snap a picture, snap, and then change it, snap a picture. Then you can share and we can help you decide. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we're helping you now. <laughs> I know. Hey. Okay. Yeah. We're really Choices. <laughs> I'm not going to give you two choices. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank Look you, out. She's going to have a whole quilt of tulips. <laughs> exactly. <That's right. laughs>
<laughs> You're like, I was a little she afraid a lot of tulip cutting and auditioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do need that. I do need that uh, don birthday donation quilt. Maybe oh, it's going to be all tulips. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. <laughs> that is true. Oh my gosh. Yeah, which actually I'll catch you up on that. Um, I emailed the one gals in charge of one common thread. And so I, I just have to actually, I might be able to drop them off today because she's in the holiday and I got to go pick up a car. Hmm. So anyways, I have the address of somebody to take all my stuff to. So even though I'm past the January deadline, they, I have resisted the urge of shuffling through the bags. <laughs> pulling fabric out good and i'm i have um a location as to where to put them so that's good but yeah that's my update on my donations yeah i'm gonna stay with the ladies yeah. so laura are you working on any applique or have any tidbits hints tips for us or have any questions relating to it or anything you're working on i um uh, i am working on some applique because i inherited a sunbonnet to all the way cut out. Um, it's, I mean, it's all it's all cut out. Um, it was my grandmother's. She has some. She has a whole bunch of. First off, the, the receipt is 1980. Um, she has the template and a whole bunch of um, old stitch witchery. 20 minutes or something. In the box. Okay. Right. Not sure what she was planning. I just found a note that said embroidery in black, everything except for the hand. So I don't know if she was going to use the stitch witchery and then applique by hand or by machine. I'm not sure what she was planning. And since it's already cut out, I'm not really sure how to tackle it. It almost um, sounds like she was going to do the blanket stitch in black thread. Do you, yeah, do you guys think that that's what it was? It first? Yeah, so you fuse it to keep it in place. And, but ask Kathy how lovely it is to hand stitch on fusible. Yeah, did, were you, Laura, were you, it's Laura, right? That's it's Laura. Talking to you. <laughs> um, yeah, the the A is you, for my last name, it's just Laura. Did you, oh, okay. <laughs> um, did you see what I showed? Did you see what I held up earlier? No, I'm yeah. okay. Let me later. show you so you know what I'm talking about. Can you see that? Oh, yes. Okay, so uh, so it's an owl. Mm -hmm. And there's like three or four layers plus the okay. um, adhesive, you know, what do you call okay. it? Stabil what is stabilizer. It? Stabilizer, usable. And so it's very thick. So if I was to sew here, I'm sewing on one, two, three, four, four layers, and I was doing it by hand, okay. which is, it's fine. It turns out fine, but sometimes I even needed to get like, they have those little rubber things that you can oh, pull okay. your needle okay. through. Yeah. yeah, or even, you know, pliers or something, because sometimes it gets, <laughs> it's so thick, you can't get it through. And so that's time consuming. And I've done like seven of them. There's 12 to go, but I mean, do, there's- uh, Were you using heat and bond? Um, well, it was a similar product. I, it was some type of Pellon product, but I don't remember okay. exactly. Because I did all those a long time ago, like mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah. I've been there. I'm surprised. I haven't touched them, but I'm surprised the ones that aren't sewn down are still, they're still adhering <laughs> to the fabric. But. Yeah. Like, yeah. Surprised. These are still there. So, my, so, Laura, my question earlier was, what if I didn't put that stabilizer uh, around the very last edge? Oh, and okay. then it wouldn't be as thick. And when you're tacking it down, you're getting part of it, but not, you know, so many layers. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, because you have, it's layered, so you are going to have some thickness in there. But Right, where you've got the sleeve and the hand. And, but, um, are they already, um, are they already fused and cut out? The yeah, fabric all... is cut out, but not the, but not the fusible. So the fabric is already cut out. Into, oh, so, 
into the sunbonnet sues. Right. So I, then you could do needle turn the with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you could do needle turn. And have you guys ever used this, um, like you, you put some spray starch in a little container and it's liquid and then you just brush it on? When, um, one of the gals I know, she did that when she did um, needle turn. So it just kind of stiffens up the edge. Okay. That might work. Has anybody oh, yeah. Monica, heard? Monica's holding up the glue stick that. Yes. Of, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you well, kind of, I, I did, what, what brand was that, Monica? Elmo's almost, almost washable. Almost, okay. And it yeah, comes in a pen, pen shape. Yeah. It's like you just oh. pop the, and you just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a stick. It's, oh, that's great. Okay. Thank you, Monica. Mm hmm so then my, my question is like, really, time. Laura, what do you want to do with it? Because I know it's your mom's and she's already cut all the pieces out, but what would make you happy to finish it? I mean, less frustrating and what you know and understand and can actually get it finished. Because really, you know, you just want to finish it and it's not necessarily 100% finishing to what she had intentional. Like, what do you want to do with it? I don't know. She had, um, it was my grandmother and I have a brother. She has the overall bill and the sunbonnet too. So I suspect she was going to give one to me and one to my brother. Um, so I would probably uh, try, I don't know what she was doing for the borders. I'm not sure if that fabric was at the bottom or not. Um, I would probably finish it and keep one and give one to my brother for his family. Um, How many do you have? How many sunbonnets? Well, 12 inch squares of each. Um, yeah. Of each, of each Sunbonnet Sue and overall bill. Look at, look at, um, look up Sunbonnet Sue's on the internet as well and look at their different layouts. Most of them, if I, you know, I, from what I recall, they just have like a sashing in between. So have right. like a cornerstone with the sashing and then mm -hmm. the 12 inch blocks. That's pretty typical for the Sunbonnet Sue's. And then you could look at those as well to get good ideas on how you want to finish it. So is it the black thread with the buttonhole or, you know, maybe you're okay doing um, the buttonhole on your machine and not by hand. Because that would, that's, make it, that would be completable. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's more manageable for the timeline that you, that you want. And yeah, I would like um, to have them done maybe by Christmas and, and maybe since my brother has Two, well, he has two daughters, and I have two daughters, so maybe, maybe even smaller, so that I could give them to our kids instead. Sunbonnet too is one of my favorites. I have my great great grandmother's sunbonnet to finish in my sewing room. Oh, how fun! It, it needs it needs some repair. That's another project. But uh -huh. right now, I just I just cherish it. Yeah. So really, there's like two things. How do you want to get it? onto the fabric so are you using fusible or needle turn or you know a freezer paper method and then the other one is how are you finishing the um the edges so is that by machine or by hand or right yeah and then i don't i don't i haven't thought that far i, I guess my stumbling block is how to get the fusible since i don't since they weren't kept I would, I, if I were starting a new sunbonnet too, I would probably use one of the quicker techniques now and and uh, not have cut out all the little pieces. But hey, it was 1980. This is what yep. she had, right? And uh, trying to make it quick. <laughs> you might just become really good at the uh, needle turn. Okay. Is that going to, we haven't gotten there yet, have we? We've done few No. Okay. No, we have. Will we get there in the next month or two? Uh, next month, I believe, is the needle turn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, and I know people do the freezer paper, but it's like, well, you already have your pieces, par you know, cut out. And the whole purpose of the freezer paper is to have the template that you fuse and then you cut your piece out and then use it to help you turn the edges under. You already have your edges, or you already have your, your pieces cut out. So right. you don't need anything for a template anymore. So you're just right now, you know, learning how to do raw edge or needle turn. Yeah, just do the needle turn. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so you just pin it to your fabric a little bit and then just 
you know, turn it under with your needle and catch it as you go, holding it down with your other thumb and a fingernail. You, you grow your thumb, you grow a thumb fingernail out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the first thing, Laura, is your left thumb okay. fingernail needs to grow out because that's the pincher. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because the other one works Not the needle on the edge and then it ticks it. But this the thumb moves along and pinches it okay. in place. That sounds like my homework. Grow the thumbnail and read about needle turn. <laughs> yes, um, and I just bit my other thumbnail like ding, 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 ding. Oh brother. <laughs> I yeah. just last last I question is she left a needle that's rusted in the corner. Um so I don't know if I can re remove that rust or, or make her block smaller. Do you have any other fabric that matches the background? It's Do you care if there's one. a rust mark in it? Because then it, you could be like, and that's a rust mark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you could add uh, to the character of it. Add what character it to it. You can uh, use restoration, uh, the fabric like a it's like a, a it's a detergent it's okay. called restoration and I soak all my whites in it and it doesn't matter how long the stain has been there it always removes it oh, and then crazy. I saw somebody's they use biz uh, laundry detergent I can't find biz in Washington you use anymore. biz remember <laughs> <that commercial. laughs> I, I, yeah. learned, I learned about the biz bucket from Martha Pullen um Lots Can you get it on Amazon? A million years ago. Oh, but yeah. I can't find it in my uh, local shop. Uh, Amazon. Go to Amazon. It'll be there yeah. tomorrow, Laura. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. I, I mean, I'm only like 20 miles from Amazon headquarters. The primer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll probably drone it to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Biz or the, I haven't heard of the Rust Oleum or whatever, but the Rust Remover it's detergent. Yeah. Oh, Re restoration. It restoration. removes all antique, like if you have any antique doilies or whatever, and you, they've been okay. sitting and collecting mildew and stuff, it, it removes it all. Okay. Wow. Okay. Good to yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. And it's gentle. And gentle. It is. And okay. super soft okay. when it comes out. My, uh... <sighs> oh, I saw that on, you posted that. Very nice. Very that nice. Fun. That was fun um, playing with, I did free motion and some straight stitch and, um, you know, some echo quilting and I also used a ruler in the middle. So I kind of hit a little bit of everything. It was just about uh, the right size to do that too. Yeah. yeah. I like the echo with the additional something in the background because I, I like know, echo, but then um, sometimes you're just feather. like, grab all the space afterwards. So I like how you I did a, I did a feather. <gasps> Look at her. Wow. wow. And I probably did it wrong, but uh, <laughs> we don't know that. Why are we so picky on ourselves? You did it. Know, but it was hard because I went, I went one direction and then I came back towards myself since it wasn't around the whole thing. Oh, and yeah. so I made it hard on myself, and I thought oh, I should have doodled it and and figured it out first. But I wanted to finish. So that's like a classic quilter move. Is because you do this at the top and then you roll it, and you don't know which direction you went. So then uh -huh. you just go for it. And then you unroll it, and you're like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or are you like the whole row and you're like okay if I did I do the feather through the whole row or did I start it from the center and go out oh. <laughs> so that's the other one <laughs> at least Diane, I'm gonna take you can see. yeah <laughs> has anybody that tried those machine pictures. what's that Vicki you're supposed to take pictures nowadays I yes to, for our recall yes yeah has, what did you has say? Anybody, has anybody tried those templates that you can run your machine through to do the echoing? Oh, I've got a echo today. <laughs> we'll see. You're going to try Mine's that one today, Joni? <laughs> if it gets here. <laughs> my, my set's due between March 1st and March 22nd. So. Oh. I have a set that sits on my shelf. <laughs> Oh, can I give you my address? <laughs> <laughs> then you can change the address so the other ones will show up March 22nd. Yeah. 
these the ones that just have the little notch for your for your hopping foot, your foot to sit in? Yes, you get inside and you. It, no, I she meant this, there's one that's made specially for going around applique versus just a just a template that you can go inside or out. Oh. oh. We're all like this one. What is this magic you're that. speaking of? I don't know that ruler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ruler. What ruler do I need? I'm sitting at my only table at my dining room table. See this little notch? This uh -huh. is made so you can put your hopping your foot in it and you can move your I've got a, uh, this works on my domestic or my long arm. Okay. You can put it in there and I can guide it around the applique. Yes. Oh. That's what I'm getting. Um, yes, and they're they're made in all different kinds of shapes. This just happens to be the end on. So on then your hand is kind of closer to the applique instead of next to the handle. I mean, you still have your hand on the handle, but you're kind of using this hand as more of the guide. Oh, okay. I'm gonna yeah. look at some of my rulers because I know I've got like the handy quilter one that has notches like that, and I'm like, I don't know what those are for. Right, yeah. so that's the one I have from uh, Peace and Quilt that obviously I've not started well, anything. Yeah, we got the same one up. Oh yeah, so it's got that little, the half moon. Mm -hmm. huh. Apparently I need to watch some more videos. If you're just doing applique by itself. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's so helpful. Thank you. Yeah, and I ordered the uh, Cindy when she was here, the what do you call that? The top, the clear plastic? Oh, that's so, that, the my sheets mom. are coming. Yeah. Yeah. So my sheets are coming today and I can practice writing with a dry erase. Dry erase. Yeah. I, I've been buying, Amazon's busy at my door every day. <laughs> <laughs> Here yeah. Yeah. Those are great though, because seriously, mm -hmm. practicing the movement and looking at different things. Okay, Vicky's got another one up. This one's a Beth Ann Nemish, I think. Lilies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there is got one right there. Yeah. Okay. I need to try this on mine because I've never done that before. And that is, that's really interesting. Just keep my pinky out of the way. And so I, I don't have a long arm. All mine's coming from my domestic machine. Yeah, yeah that's mine. That's how I was for years. Okay, Joni, get, get going on it and let me know how it goes. Well, this is what I'm going to be doing when it comes in. I, I started that two days, three days ago. Oh, yes, you got it done. That's so cute. Yeah, it's back to it's waiting for those rulers to come in to go to my machine. Oh, it turned out so ah. cute. So pretty, yeah. those colors. In fact, okay. what's interesting, is, Judy, is I did my machine, like my standard machine for my quilting for years. And I always caught up and I always quilted my quilts. The minute I got the long arm, forget about it. I got piles. I don't even finish, you know. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm like, I quilted more when I did it on the standard and got them like, to, I never had a pile of tops, never when I had my standard. <laughs> but I got the big one and it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> for that behavior. All right, I won't. I won't get one then. <laughs> Judy, which domestic do you have? I have a Bernina. Oh, okay. So you can use the long arm rulers. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I have the one eighty. Which is really interesting that people have seven eighty. Got so much more. Where oh, we never did that. Like I never used a ruler with my long arm. Or with my standard, but yeah, why not? Uh huh. Mm. Well, as we're coming right. to the end, anybody else have any questions about the group, about a pattern, about a project, about a technique? Pat has yes. something to show. Oh, <laughs> not Pat. much, but I finished the top. Let's see <gasps> if I can get back far enough so you can see it. Pretty oh, nice. how pretty. Okay, hold it up. Hold it up. Oh, nice. yes. I love the pink and your fabric is perfectly wonderful. It doesn't look too bad. <laughs> oh, it looks nice. It looks pretty. It looks nice. I love that combination and the pink pop. 
perfect. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. I was going, at first I thought all gray and then I said, what am I talking about? That's not going to look very good. It's just going to blend right into the wall. <laughs> I love the pink. So did you decide how you're going to quilt it? Because Laura quilted hers wonderfully. Mm, I don't know. I'm not the freehand type. Like a, it doesn't work for me right now. <laughs> so you could do a grid or a straight stitch just fine on that. Yeah, I thought that I would do a, like a straight stitch. Like, I'm not sure what I want to do in the center. Oh, Unless something it's, different? You know, the center uh, again. a square that just keeps going around or something. I don't know. Hold the okay. center back up, Pat. Trust you to do that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Laura did like a sunflower, some fly, flowery thing in the center, and it was cute. I saw something that was new to me the other day. Mm -hmm. and oh, oh, you know, the deal one of the online long arm people, they take, take your initial and then they put uh, feathers or design around their initial. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah. Fancy mm -hmm. monogram. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> that would be kind of fun. The other thing uh, the, with the holiday mystery quilt, um, I finished quilting that one and I just did wavy lines and they didn't line up perfectly. I made sure that like not all the tops or the valleys and the, and the dips were the same. And that worked out really good. And I think Krista Watson's got a really good wavy line uh, video tutorial too. But yeah, have some fun. Don't worry about it. It's a small project, which makes it very manageable on the machine for sure. And in previous, we did do a little bit of um, machine quilting. So you can look in the group and find the machine quilting and go through. And that kind of starts you off simple and then looks at more complicated designs. But most of them are geared towards using your standard. The very last one introduces a long arm. So it's not, yeah, it's doable. But yeah, oh, I love that. Thanks for showing. Vicki, did you have something you were saying? I posted three pictures of my finish from um, Square Dance Quilting Bee. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to go look. I haven't gone in there yet because I was working on I just posted and I just finally figured it out today. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. The other thing is, will you, fi will you remember to figure it out tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> like, that's the question. <laughs> Post-it notes. Oh yeah, post-it notes. I hope you do because that'll be fun to see what you're working on because you're working on a lot of different things. So and those, and those are just the piece blocks because I have to take them back to the drawing board to get the template thing to quilt by. Yeah. I did the instructions for the logo. Nice. Well, you're moving along pretty quickly then. Good. Yes. On the what the pictures you um, posted. The purple and pink fabric, are those Easter eggs? Or what? what is that? It's a mitten, but it looked like Easter eggs to me. It was me. It's a mitten. Yeah, I, 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 was, I saw a mitten too, but I couldn't tell. That's why I was trying to clarify, because then it looked like maybe an egg on, uh -huh. in a basket uh -huh. as well. So I wasn't sure, but it's cute. It is super cute. I made a mistake on that one. Um, I'm supposed to have one more row around it for class. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. This, the one that's just pale lilac is where I made the mistake. Mm -hmm. That was supposed, the lilac was supposed to go where the white is. Mm. I was supposed to use the mittens for the points and then put a mitten row uh -huh. around it. And I stopped where it was when I realized I made the mistake because I didn't have enough lilac to do it twice. <laughs> that's like me with the homestead. Yeah. What, yeah. they're supposed to be a border? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, <Vicky. laughs> what, the border's supposed yeah. to be not lilac or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did this one yesterday at noon. Oh, fun. We were supposed to, we were supposed to have, we were supposed to take a picture, but I didn't know this because she didn't tell us. She told us it was a, it was a quilt along. Uh-huh. Well, yes, but she took a picture in the park printed it on that um, foundation paper, that real thin that you lay down and use. And then she stitched over the top of it. Well, I didn't have one of those, so I had to just stitch my tree. But then I was the only one who participated. 
Well, now that you have your street tri tree stitch, though, is that just on muslin or something? It's just on white. But now you that can go back with colors. You can go back with fat. You can go back with like a fabric marker or crayons, and you can color it. No, not yet. Oh. I'm going to put a swing here. Oh, cute. That little swing with a little wood thing. Oh. Down here. And I got to put a piece of ground around here, maybe a little bit of a stencil on the side someplace. Yeah. Yeah, because I know some. I'll probably like... go back in and uh, free motion and try to do that last stitch. Oh. I tried to make a hole for an animal home up here. That would be cute. So there'll have to be a squirrel or something around there, I guess. Or maybe the tail where he's all, you know, all you can see. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, all right. Anybody else have anything else to ask? Um, yeah, Laura. Do we need to do anything before the ruler quarterly? The fat okay. ruler quarterly. So if you have the ruler, and it's the hex and more, I think is the first one. So it looks like this. That's the ruler. So if you have the ruler, the pattern will go up and with instructions on how to use it with other resources. If you don't have the ruler, you can watch it and look at it. And if it's something you're interested in, you can buy the ruler knowing that there, there is that. And then at any of the meetups that we go to, like the Tuesday, like this afternoon one, if you have any questions about it, when it does show up and you are interested in using it and you're trying it and you have questions, just ask them in, in our meetups. Are there other rulers that kind of look like that? Is that the one like the nebula? It's the hex and more. And so it has a hexagon on the one side and then the triangle point on the other. Is it the same as the nebula ruler? That, but... The Nebula, I'm not sure. This one's by Jaybird. So I thought it was by oh, That's it. It's Jaybird. Yeah. Because they do they did Nebula's rulers. Oh, okay. Yeah. That one. Yeah. So so when that goes up, it'll have a project you can try out on. And if you don't have the ruler, you can just kind of like, okay, am I interested in trying that out? And then knowing that there's some more help or an additional pattern. And it's got all the resources there for you. Yeah. So yeah. do different people do different rulers? There's four rulers for the year. So there's like the curved one by So Wonderful, the Hex and More, the um, Tumblr, I th oh, the Slicer, the Slicer from Vanessa of Crafty oh. Gemini. And what's the fourth one? Pineapple, the Pineapple Ruler. I don't think I have a pineapple. Wh which, which Pineapple Ruler is it? It is, um, I just bought one, two different sizes. I'm going to say it's the quilt, uh, what do you call it? Oh, it's probably right here. Oh, it's by, uh, right here in my collection so this one is by creative grids yeah that's the one I just bought oh yeah cool when is when is that um class that one I think might be April okay let me look really quick and see if I've got it down here I thought when you started the ruler thing, you were going to do one a month and just give a little short, short demo thing. No, just the quarterly. So yeah. February is the hex and more. And then the curved is April. So the curved is April. Vanessa's is July. Oh, so the pineapple one is not until, um, where did that go? December. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, <laughs> you're no. way ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'll be. I'll have plenty of time to figure out what colors. <laughs> yeah, and you have to try it out and stuff like that too. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Anything else? We're happy as can be. I guess. I'll be happy when I quit my block. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you and Pat. I can't wait to see him. We'll see him when they get to share them. Cool. So when um so when do we meet up again? Next the third or the fourth, the fourth mm -hmm. Tuesday. Okay. Look. They're just our typical regular one. It's is coming up. Yeah, we so had extra one. Twenty third. And then yeah, the fourth Tuesday. I'll miss that. PM show and tell. So on the twenty third. Okay. Yeah. Seven PM. Yep. Mm -hmm. On the twenty third is the seven time. Mountain time. Yep. Yes. You just got her hand up. Oh, Cindy. Oh, okay. I wrote that down. We had talked. I think it was at the retreat about um half square triangle rulers. Oh, the trimming one. Yeah. Does anybody remember that conversation? Yeah. It was the new leaf quilt. It was the new leaf um, square up ruler or something like that. Yeah. Lock and lock. No, it was yeah, block lock. lock. No. It wasn't block lock. No, I have one of those. Uh, I use the block lock and I really like it. It was. I do too. Um, now, do they come in sizes? Do you buy one for every size? You don't have to, but some people do buy different sizes. You um, can I, just slide it. I don't. Is there like, can you get one that you can use for many sizes? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's just put a link in the chat. I I had the two. I have the two inch one and or two and a half inch one and it's pretty tiny for my hands my hands get tired so i would definitely buy the bigger one where i think they have three sizes i have i have the six and a half i really <clears throat> like it i mean it's mm -hmm. easy to maneuver you know yeah yeah and just the fact that you can slide it <laughs> it's like it saves so much time yeah yeah well, and you're trimming before you open it and it gets misshapen as well. So it's like, a, it's, it's a good trimmer, but I did put that in there. And I think that's the one that Judy's talking about because it has the two different sizes and it goes to six mm -hmm. and a half. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. And I thought one that, oh yeah. So five and a half actually says 11 sizes, one and a half to six and a half. So it just depends on how you. They're counting the half inches. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but I know, yeah, because Judy, did you buy it because of the retreat or? You no, I had bought it for a, another cool project I was doing. And um, by the time I got done making I know, a dozen of them, my hands were tired because it was just so tiny for me to hold on to. Yeah. 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 So I'm thinking bigger to hold on to. Mm -hmm. And you maybe you could put even put a suction cup with a knob on it so you can. Oh, yeah. Easier to hold on. Yeah. It looks like they don't make one any bigger than six and a half. No, I think the six and a half is have one big. I thought they have one bigger than that. Maybe. But one size bigger, I thought. Um, I, I can't find it. I on think they, I, I'm not sure, but I think they might have come out with this six and a half first. I'm not positive, but then I thought there yeah. was a bigger one too. But yeah, I, the six and a half. Yeah, it is new leaf stitches. So you can just find her find her and then find she'll have them on her website too oh, okay mm -hmm. but that was i lost that paper when i went to get one i just make too many half square triangles yeah mm -hmm. it's called the perfectly slotted trimmers and it's produced by new leaf yeah. Yeah, that's so. That's what I have. I couldn't. Oh, yeah. I didn't buy the block out only because I, I felt like I couldn't justify my purchase since I had to clearly slide it. <laughs> so, but one day I probably will still try can, the block lock. But yeah, I have the. Can you show it? Perfect, Monica. Can you show it again? I haven't seen it before. Right, so it's, it comes in. It has two sizes. One of them is for the half size finish, and the other side is for the like. So if you need a two inch finish, like there's a triangle for all the. Oh, um, okay. Those. And then we have the two and a half. So like you have one for that size. So it is two of them. I don't know where the other one oh, is. Okay. okay. 
Yeah. It's somewhere nearby, but yeah, good luck with me needing it when I actually need to put my hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. Yep. But yeah, so it has, and it even has the little notches in there to cut out the the dog ears and everything, so. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so smart. All right, we all good? We're set? Yep. Yeah. Yep, okay. we're good. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you in a, a week or so. Okay, have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.